When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. Hey, everybody. Jerry Williams, a.k.a. Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. Today, we look at another of Eric Dubay's 200 proofs. Earth is not a spinning ball, Dubay says. If Earth and its atmosphere were constantly spinning eastwards over 1,000 miles per hour, then the average commercial airliner traveling 500 miles per hour should never be able to reach its eastward destinations before they come speeding up from behind. Likewise, westward destinations should be arrived at thrice the speed. But this is not the case. Oh my God. This is the same things as before. Relative motion, people. If the ground is the frame of reference, and since we're talking about going from one place to another on the ground, that's the best reference to use here, we can refer to the ground's velocity how we want. We can call it 1,000 miles per hour east. It's a vector. It has a magnitude and a direction. A plane that is on the ground has the same tangential velocity as the ground. It has that same vector, 1,000 miles per hour east. Relative to each other, they are not moving. If we wanted to, we could say they are both not moving because relative to each other, in that frame of reference, they are not. But we'll stick with 1,000 miles per hour east. If the plane starts rolling on the ground, no matter which direction it's going, if it's rolling east, it added 100 miles per hour to the original vector. If west, it's subtracted 100. If it's going north or south, it's added a new vector of plus 100 miles per hour. But since the Earth has a zero value vector in that direction, it's a net 100 miles per hour in that direction. No matter which way it goes, its relative velocity is 100 miles per hour. Then it speeds up to 200, 300, 400, 500 miles per hour all still relative to the ground. It's not gonna fall behind or gain It's because it's off the surface. What these people are asking you to believe is that some great breaking force must stop the forward motion of an object when it detaches from its initial source of velocity. And that again is just a denial of Newton's first law of motion. And seriously, after all the claims I've done so far, if Denying the laws of motion is the best he's got. The last batch of these will be pretty easy. So I will see you all next week when I get to number 126. 26. This was only number 25. Oh my God. Oh my God. Is there no one on this planet to even challenge me?